and welcome back to my channel. My name is Whispering Willow ASMR and today we are going to be doing another true crime case. I know true crime can be not the most relaxing topic, so if you want relaxing ASMR, I would suggest going to a different video of mine that I have. I have a ton of relaxing, soothing, peaceful content. I'm going to give a warning. This video, this topic, this specific case has child grooming, abduction, kidnapping, um, and some scary stuff. So if you aren't into that, please go to another video. Okay. And if you're into true crime as well as relaxing content, think about leaving a like or subscribing. Let's get into the case. Also, I just want to add that I'm going to be looking down here quite a bit because my notes are down there and I don't want to get anything incorrect. So this case was actually recommended to me by a subscriber. I will try and find the subscriber. If I don't find the person, you know who you are. I will um, put your name. Just comment below and I'll find you. I'm so sorry. But they recommended this case and I looked it up really quickly and I was like, yes, this is a recent case. I want to cover it. Let's bring awareness to it and maybe someone knows something. So if you're from Arizona, well, listen up. <laughs> or even in the southern area of the U.S. So this is the case of Alicia Navarro. She disappeared from her home in Glendale, Arizona on September 15th, 2019. So this is a fairly recent case. Um, it was just five days before her 15th birthday when she disappeared, so she was 14 going on 15. Alicia was described as her family as a highly functioning autistic. So she wasn't a troubled child. She wasn't into drugs or alcohol. She just had developmental issues and wasn't good in social situations. Um, she was a very sweet girl and didn't have issues with anything like that, but it was harder for her to make friends in social situations and at school, so she spent most of her time online, like in online games, online servers, that kind of thing. They don't mention this in the case, but I was thinking like an online game like Roblox where you can talk to people and she was a young kid, so something like that. Her mother said that she only wore a white sweatshirt even when it was over 100 degrees outside and only ate McDonald's chicken nuggets. So the night before the disappearance, Alicia had come into the kitchen to get a glass of water and noticed her mom was still awake and her mom had said that Alicia was like frantic or just like confused while why her mom was still awake and told her mom that she should go to bed. Um, so the mom went to sleep in the siblings room while she waited for the husband to come home and then the husband slept, came home and slept on the couch. So in the morning, they noticed the back door was opened and unlocked and they went into the yard and saw that a bunch of bricks and chairs had been stacked on top of each other. Um, as if someone was trying to climb out of the yard. So they ran to Alicia's room and she was nowhere to be seen and they didn't know where she had gone. Her MacBook was missing and her phone was missing. So clearly she had run away and gone somewhere. She also left a note that said, I ran away, I will be back, I swear, I'm sorry. And she also took her makeup perfume and a copy of a very expensive Iron Man comic book that her mother had bought her a few days before. And apparently Alicia had begged her mother to buy it for her, like she really needed it, even though she wasn't interested in Iron Man and just never seemed to pick it up after her mother bought it for her. So that's just an interesting side thing. Prior to her disappearance, her mother said that Alicia had issues with grown men talking to her online, but 
since Alicia didn't have those social, the social awareness, she didn't know that it was wrong or an issue to have these older men talking to her as a 14 year old. Um, the mother, Jessica, got in contact to the police about the situation, but they couldn't do anything because one, it's online, and two, nothing, technically nothing illegal had happened. It's just like creepy old men talking to a 14 year old, and unfortunately, can't do anything about that. It later, investigators later found out that Alicia had been carrying around a burner phone at school, which is really strange, and the friends didn't tell anyone because they didn't really think it was an issue. Um, one of them also mentioned that Alicia had discussed running away from home, but didn't think it was that serious, so again, they didn't tell anyone. By the time the parents noticed that uh, Alicia was missing, the MacBook and phone that Alicia had with her had already been turned off, so there's no way they could track her. And I don't know if it's because it's still technically an open case, but not a lot of information has come out about the actual investigation itself and what police did during the investigation. Usually I'll go through the crime scene, blah, 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 blah what happened. But honestly, all they know is that she ran away. She had her MacBook and her phone. She was talking to these strange men before she left. So moving on into theories, um, it is pretty much believed that Alicia was lured from her home by a online predator slash groomer. So someone probably encouraged her to bring her laptop and phone to hide messages between each other and communication stuff. Um, and she also brought the comic book with her, so they're pretty certain somehow they convinced Alicia to convince her mom to buy the comic book for the online predator. Um, something else that happened was the mother decided to do investigating on her own because apparently there were sightings of Alicia at a park about a half mile away. So she went to the park and surrounding houses and started to ask questions like, have you seen my daughter? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Did you see my daughter on this day? And there were people that were like, yeah, I saw this person, this girl that you're describing, and she was with a older, dark-skinned man who was heavily tattooed around the neck. Um, and after that, there were no but she couldn't do anything after that because there were no cameras at the park and like you can't do it like what are you going to do with that information but the current main theory that police believe is that Alicia was talking to a man online who was grooming her and convinced her to come see him to just come and visit and play games with them because she brought her laptop but she didn't um, bring her laptop charger. Also in her note, she said she was going to return. So they think that this groomer lured her out, said, hey, we're just going to play games for a little bit and then you can go back home. Um, but that clearly ended up not happening. It also explains the comic book she begged her mother to buy for her. Perhaps the person she was talking to also convinced Alicia to buy it for her so she could bring it to the person. So she hasn't been seen in over a year. It's February 2021 and she has been missing since September 2019. They also think it's possible that she was groomed online and then trafficked and sold into human sex trafficking or the other thing. It's possible that the person who groomed her is still alive and just like creepily holding her hostage. That's like a side thing I saw in Twitter, I'm not Twitter, in Reddit. Someone was going on about that it's possible like these creepy predators want them alive. I don't know. I'm not going to get into it because it, I just don't. It's creepy. It's late at night. I don't want to have those disturbing thoughts in my head. But those are all theory. So I also went into a deep dive on Reddit into this like convention groomer luring ring where these groomers um, go and like they try to lure people and say like I'm gonna take let's go to Comic-Con or let's go to this convention. So it's possible that that happened. I didn't do a ton of research on that. I just 
she went missing there were a ton of different conventions happening in the area so I think that came about because of the whole comic book thing like they were thinking that this person might have lured her by saying let's go to this convention blah 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 blah, blah. or we can go play games and she was like okay sounds good yeah let's go I'll bring you this comic book and then um we'll just go back to my house like you can just drop me off or something so a year after the disappearance in September so in September 2020 the family held another press conference with the police saying hello we just want to know where she is it's been too long can someone please have some kind of compassion she's truly missed I love her very much so now Alicia's face is seen in gas stations across the state she's been in multiple podcasts newspapers, national stories, just to get any type of tip or lead on the case and give um, the family some type of miracle, I guess. Um, but yes, that is basically the gist of the story. It's very sad because there's no evidence. So that is the story of Alicia. I'm sorry this video is short, but a subscriber actually recommended this case and I did my research on it and I thought it was necessary to talk about. I do a lot of older cases that obviously aren't going to be solved because um, it's been a hundred years and everyone's dead. But Alicia, this is a newer case. You never know what could happen or what people know. So I would, I want to bring awareness to more cases like this where it's recent um, and just any tip at all could help. So if you know anything, if you live in the Arizona area in Glendale and know anything, um, you can contact the National Center for Mission missing and exploited children at 1-800-THE-LOST and you can also call the Glendale Police Department so you never know what someone knows what someone knows what someone knows so I just wanted to put that out there that is the end of this case I hope you not necessarily enjoyed but was intrigued I hope I opened your eyes to a case, an important case, and you are leaving this video with some sort of emotion. I'm tiptoeing around my words right now because I don't want to say I hope you enjoyed. Um, but if you're interested in true crime and ASMR as well as basic ASMR content, I am your gal. So go ahead and like and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video.